Hey, Sean. Today we're talking about the horizontal stack as an offensive strategy in Ultimate Frisbee. And there are a lot of alternatives to this, including the vertical stack, but I wanna talk about for just a second why we stack and why it's a good idea to use a stack and why the horizontal stack is a great choice for beginners getting used to the game and getting used to playing with each other. A stack exists so that we can clean up the clutter on the field. Typically there's two kinds of players on a field at once. You've got your handlers, which are like your quarterbacks, and you've got your cutters, which are like your wide receivers. Usually of the seven players on the field, two to three of them are gonna be dedicated handles, and four to five of them are going to be dedicated cutters. So a stack is a way of organizing your team on the field in a way that your cutters aren't gonna get in each other's way, so that you're never running and all of a sudden someone else is running at you and your thrower has to look at two people and two defenders. It creates a lot of confusion, so having a stack is a way to put your players on the field in a way that they're not going to step on each other's toes, literally or figuratively, with where they can cut. So most stacks work like this, and the horizontal stack is no exception. The first thing you're gonna to try to do is one of the handlers is going to try to advance the discs down the field to a cutter. Now, if that can happen, that cutter is gonna turn, and their first instinct is gonna be, can they advance the disc even further to someone else who's open, and if that's not immediately available, they're gonna turn around and dump the disc back to a handle, and then they're gonna move downfield again and get out of the way. So this, this sort of repeats and repeats and repeats where the disc gets moved downfield, handlers move upfield, reset to them, and everything starts over again. And you keep doing the same motion, the same uh, flow again and again and again, just advancing down the field each time. If none of the cutters are open or there isn't a good cut, the handlers can then look at each other and dump or swing the disc in a way that maintains possession and resets the stall count, and then you can attempt it again uh, trying to advance the disc. So let's take a look at what the horizontal stack is and how it works. The horizontal stack is laid out with three handlers and four cutters, and the four cutters are spread across the field horizontally from left to right, from home to away, however you want to say it, and each of them gets about 25% of the field. We're just cutting it into four equal lanes. And by default, you never leave your lane. Each cutter is gonna stay in their lane the whole time, and that's how this works to declutter the offense, where you're not gonna have somebody cut in front of you. You've got your 10 yards of the field that's all yours, and no one else is gonna come in there and mess with it. And that is, at its simplest, how the horizontal stack keeps things from getting cluttered up. Now, of these four cutters, we usually call the two middle ones the middles, and the two outside ones, the wings. And they have slightly different roles, but the key to the horizontal stack working really well is communication. Because even if you stay in your own lanes, if everybody cuts forward at the same time toward the disc, then that brings forward every defender and takes away pretty much every option for your handler to have a good choice. And so communication becomes important to say who's going to cut when and in what order, and how can we do this so that we don't clutter up everything uh, doing the same thing again and again. So while it's important for all four cutters to communicate with each other really well, and that's what separates the good teams from the bad teams, as a default, the wings are gonna end up following the motion of the middles, or the poppers, we sometimes call them, uh, and the poppers are gonna communicate with each other to make sure that they're not cutting at the same time to the same place, to where if the middle is cutting in toward the disc, the wing is gonna push out a little bit downfield, a little deeper downfield, and that way you don't have two people cutting in the same space at the same time. And as the disc advances down the field, it's really important for the stack to adjust. And if the disc makes it a, a far way down the field, the rest of that stack needs to push fast to move further downfield so that they can be ready for these next throws. Because if the disc advances forward past the end of the stack, there's no one to throw it to because everyone's behind the disc. So as, as you play, the stack is gonna be constantly evaluating the depth of the disc and how far up or down field they need to be. Sometimes you may see a player in a stack holding their arms out to the sides as if to say, here, the stack should be set about here in the middle and you can cut forward or backward from here. Uh, and that's a handy role to play on the team. And if you want somebody to be sort of in charge of that, we, we call them the stack master sometimes. They can say, the stack is here and they're paying attention when other people may get lost in the game or they wanna pay attention to something else. Putting someone in that dedicated role to control the depth of the stack can really be helpful. And lastly, if you're a cutter, if you're one of the wings or the middles or poppers, the mindset you wanna be in is not constantly running up and down your lane. People talk about the idea of pistons and these things should just be pushing back and forth nonstop the whole time trying to create an opportunity. And when run well, the best cut you can make is by waiting 
and then taking a step in one direction and going hard in the other direction. And so if, if you're in the stack, if, if you're pushed a little deep and you know you wanna cut in to get the disc, you know you've got an opportunity, the person next to you is clearing out and you can go in and get it. You wanna wait. You don't wanna be jogging in there slowly. You wanna wait and then sort of step into your fender to make it look like you're going deep and then you turn and you cut hard in toward the disc and that's how you're going to get very, very open. And so pull back, look at the handler, look where the other cutters are on the field and if you see that somebody's about to get the disc, one of the other cutters, you know you can push deeper to go be their continuation and be that next throw downfield to get a point, to get extra yards. And so be in a situation where you're evaluating the field, you're waiting, you're not just idly jogging up and down. Your primary role as a cutter is to look and be aware of the field and then cut in a reaction to whatever's happening on the field. Now for default cuts, the horizontal stack ends up in, in one of two configurations. The disc is either somewhere in the middle of the field or the disc is on the sidelines of the field or, or closer to the sidelines. And the reason that this matters is if the disc is in the middle of the field, you get to sort of choose where you wanna have your cuts because you can throw almost anywhere depending on where the force is. And so you can throw to either side of the field as where if the disc is on the sideline, it's really difficult to make a throw to somebody who's on the opposite sideline of the field. And so understanding where the disc is and configuring your horizontal stack appropriately is gonna make easier opportunities for your team. So we're gonna look first at the centered disc. So when the disc is centered, you're gonna want that general piston motion, but again, we don't want running just for the sake of running back and forth. We wanna be looking for opportunities, communicating. But those middle two cutters, the middles or the poppers, are going to be the primary looks when the disc is centered because if we can keep the disc in the middle of the field, we always have more options than if the disc gets pushed to the sideline. So if the disc is already in the middle of the field, keeping it to one of the middle two players is gonna be better for us in general than making a throw all the way to one of the wings and, and get the disc against the sideline. So those middle cutters need to work together to figure out who's going to cut. And sometimes it can be very obvious where if the two of you, one of you has your person guarding them and they're behind you sort of taking away your deep look, you know that you're the obvious choice to cut in for the disc, um, or it may be vice versa where your person's really stopping you from going in, but you know you can all of a sudden turn and go and your handler can put it to you, but you need to work together so that you're not cutting at the same time. Now, while the poppers are doing this, the wings should be focused on pushing deep a little bit, pushing downfield for two reasons. One, it's gonna pull your defenders out of the way. If you're sort of pushed in, you're bringing your defender with you who can end up sort of clogging things up, poaching off and getting some extra Ds or blocks, which we don't want. And so by you pulling deep and making yourself a threat, you make your defender have to come with you, which opens up the field, which is again, what this whole stack is about. And so pull back, bring your defender with you, and that's gonna open up more space underneath for those poppers to work with. The other thing that this does is it actually makes you an option for one of those poppers to throw it to you right away if they get it. Where if a popper cuts in, they get the disc and they turn and you're already going deep, they know they can put that disc to you and that's an easy point or at least an easy advance of a lot of yards because you were ready for it and you trusted them to get the disc and you made an opportunity for that continuation throw. And so that's why when the disc is in the center of the field, by default, you want your poppers to move in the middle, stay a little shallow, and your wings to push a little deep and be ready for that continuation or even that point. Now, by contrast, when the disc gets swung to the sideline, whether that happens with a handler not having any options and they turn and they throw it to the reset handle, or the handle does throw it to a cutter and then the handler gets, gets covered and so the cutter resets to one of the handles on the sidelines, Regardless of how it happens, when the disc ends up on the sideline, you don't want your two poppers in the middle doing all of the work and your two wings still pushing deep. You want to adjust because if the disc is on one sideline, it's pretty difficult to get a throw to the cutter who's on the opposite sideline. And so in general, in these situations, we want the two cutters who are on the same side of the field as the disc to become more active. And again, we want the middle of those two cutters who's more infield, more toward the middle, we want them to be more active because if we can get the disc to them, then we're off the sideline, which is better, and we advance the disc. As where if the disc advances straight up the sideline, that's fine, and there's a lot of good options there sometimes, especially if there's a good continue right away. But by default, we're still on the sideline, which isn't as good as being in the middle of the field. So it's up to the two cutters who are on the, the disc side of the field to work together, typically the popper first and then the deep making in cuts, but working together to make sure they're not cutting at the same time and making sure that they leave a bunch of room for each other. As always, 
For the handlers, if neither one of these looks open up, you always have that dump swing to other handles where they can maybe get the disc in the middle of the field and then swing all the way to the cutters on the other side and then we've switched the whole thing and the defense is on the wrong side of everything. That's another option, but if we can continue to advance the disc, this is the way to do it more easily. That's a general overview of what the horizontal stack looks like, and those are the general rules to stick to as defaults. But like most good strategies, there's always room to optimize and to tweak things, especially as you get to know your teammates and you're able to communicate a little more easily. You watch veteran teams play together, do amazing things because they can anticipate what their teammates are gonna do. One of my favorite things to do with the horizontal stack when everyone is in good communication is essentially the opposite of what we just talked about for a sideline disc where instead of the two cutters who are on that side of the field becoming active, those two cutters immediately push way deep, taking their defenders with them, which gives a first look for a deep shot right away. But the other thing it does is it opens up that whole section of the field, and actually the two cutters from the wrong side of the field can end up cutting into this side of the field. So the cutters essentially switch sides of the field, but during that switch, because it's this big rotation, there's a lot of space created. There's a whole bunch of opportunity to have an open look to one of these cutters. And you just have to be in communication so that you're not cutting each other off. Because this is, again, this is where you're leaving your lane, which is the whole point of this thing. So if everyone's not on board, you're gonna have a lot of cluttering, a lot of crowding. But if everyone is on board and you know when the disc is over here, these people are gonna push way deep and these people are gonna come over and fill. And after those people push deep, they slide to that far side of the field and everything goes back to the way it was, just flipped. It's a fun thing to do, but get out there, try it. At first, stay in your lane, and when your team's ready for it, try some of these other things, or see where maybe some opportunities are, depending on how your players play, and adjust this as you go. After you make points, or after the other team makes points, and there's, there's timeouts, talk about what's working well and what's not working well, and you can find yourself quickly honing in on a really, really functional, handy offensive strategy for Ultimate Frisbee. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.